Meta's going to try to duplicate what Bivol did and what he did against Castagna, which is throw a jab to the high guard and make keep it occupied and push him back. And he was able to do that against Castaño, and so was Bivol able to do that against Canelo. Just threw it to their backhand to get him to take a step back. And when Mel was on the ropes, he threw his signature left hook to get space, causing Castaño to take a step back. And when Castaño comes and leans in like Canelo does in the bottom half, he just pushes him back. But he was able to do this because he was the bigger guy against Castaño. He's fighting a more skilled version and a bigger version of Castaño. And can he duplicate what he did in Bivol? fight perhaps but I don't think he's going to do it I think that Canelo's size is going to be too much for him and I think he's going to be coming forward putting pressure because when Castaño put pressure against him and parried his jab with his right hand he was able to close that distance in that space and make Mel look really uncomfortable and take multiple steps to try to compensate for him not being comfortable so when his tactics wasn't working what he did is he took a step back and then he tried to go in with his lead left hand his jab hand and smother and push him off and use a little bit of his forearm but Castaño catches him on the neck with his forearm and Canelo would do the exact same in the where Canelo noticed Caleb playing like the lay on his right side and he just used his arms and hands in the inside he was even able to attack his weak side right there he parries the jab throws a left hook and then after he throws a left hook he pivots to the left and creates an angle for his offense that punch will be there for him. Mel was being controlled by the guy who he was stronger to he has no idea where punches are coming from he can't see but his head is easily be controlled because he likes to lunge and lean forward in the inside when Castano follows him back to the ropes and takes away this space it makes him jittery and nervous again he tries to go right back to clinch and fall into his right side he just does not know how to fight unless you give him a certain space and let him fight at a certain rhythm. But if he does, if you don't do that and you close and you use your forearms in the inside like Astano's doing right here, pushing him off, you can run him into shots right there. He pushes him off and then almost clips him with the same hand as he's pulling back from punches. Jamel likes to bring his head to a guy's body to go to their body. And all you have to do is extend your lead hand like Castano did, the shorter guy, and he ran him into a right hook. Mel trying to create space, he telegraphs before he does it. He'll dip down and drop his head and doesn't see where the shot's coming from right before he throws the left hook. And when he throws his jab, he leans and he leans over his front foot, leaving him off balance. And all you have to do is parry that shot and there'll be counter punch opportunities. He's stuck for a second. He makes the same mistake Earl Spence makes and a lot of Derrick James fighters makes, which is they don't move their feet with their hands. And that's why Earl Spence was able to get taken advantage of by Bud. But he's a good trainer, but the fundamentals have to be there. Like I said, Jamel drops back, telegraphs the left hook, almost telling him he's going to throw it. And the trainer is able to place a hand on his shoulder and control him right after that shot because he puts everything into that shot and he lunges to the shorter person's body. And then after throwing that shot, he'll pull straight back from that punch and Castaño makes him pay up top. The trainer barely glances him at the bottom, but that's a big flaw that he has. Look here, left hook when he wants to pump it to back up. Left hook again, body's all square up. His body's all square and his feet are in bad positions and he's off balance. Right here, Castaño throws a right hand and then switches the southpaw. Gets his foot behind him, put the forearm on him, and then catches him with a shot on the way out because he pulls straight back from punches. Right here, Mel jabs him to the body, but the trainer catches him slightly with the right hand. And up top, Castaño could have caught him with counter punch if he didn't lose so much position. And Canelo's a much bigger guy than Castaño. He's not going to just back up from straight left hooks to the body. But every time Mel wants you to back up, he'll stab you to the body or consistently throw right hands. He'll try different methods. But look, right here, Mel ducks his head. And he dips so low in this that he almost actually touches the knee to the canvas. That's so crazy that he's getting that low in training. What do you think is going to happen? With all this being said, I think that Mel's going to lose the fight. Mel showed me that the style to beat him is a pressure fighter. Castaño is a smaller version of Canelo and less skilled, like I said. So with his bad fundamentals of lunging in, feet being in poor position, pulling straight back from punches, bringing his head to Canelo, Canelo being a pressure, count, uh, aggressive counter puncher, it's going to be a lot of opportunities for him to catch Mel. Here, the trainer just puts his hand on his head and Mel telegraphs the left hook and look at his face, the intensity that he's throwing it to. It's going to take more than one shot and the shorts are going, the shots are going to have to be shorter to get Canelo, the, the more skilled counter puncher, out of there. He's not a big enough star to win on decision. He's easily can be controlled with his head. Canelo being more skilled, looking for counter punch opportunities that he's going to give him. I just don't see a path to victory for Mel unless Canelo just gets old overnight. But even then, I've never even seen him knocked down. 
I don't think Mel has the power to knock him down. It's a new way for him. And he's going to be telling him, the counter puncher, when he's going to throw his punches with his body language. I don't see a path to victory for him. I think this is going to be a fairly easy fight for Canelo. Now, granted, Canelo has to go to the body. You see right there, Mel telegraphs his punches when he wants you to back up and he opens up for power. But Canelo has to go to the body. The way he was able to dispel of Kovalev is with a good body attack. Right here, Kovalev shells up and he throws a left hook to the around the guard and then he throws a right hook to the body. Now Kovalev uh, then tries to smother him and Canelo just puts his forearm on him and controls him like I know he could do in the male fight like he did in the Caleb Plant fight. That right hand over the top of him controlling him with the forearm will be there because Mel likes to panic. But everything, he has to throw body punches in this fight. There's no way he can win this fight without throwing body punches. Canelo fights similar to Castellano, except he has an active high guard. See, he leaves the opening, and the moment that Kovalev tries to exploit the opening, unlike Constantine who gets pushed back, he knocks the punch down and then drops down and gives him eye contact like he's going to go to the body, and Kovalev then drops, and then he runs right into the left hook. And it was all set up by the first body shot that he threw. Like I said, Mel doesn't like to fight from a certain distance. He gets uncomfortable and starts lunging in the clinches, and he could be easily controlled. None of that means anything if Canelo does not have a conserved body attack. Uh, that knockout with Kovalev doesn't happen if he doesn't go to the body early in the fight. He has to go to the body and take away the wheels, the wheels from Charlo and then parry and block punches because he's only going to throw straight punches. Or when he gets on the rope, he's going to double up on the hook or try to throw the hook to get Canelo to back away. Even times in the fight with, with Castano, he would throw a right hand just to get Castano to back up. He, he didn't even keep his feet anchored in the back of him. It was a don't hit me punch. Those type of punches won't work on a bigger guy. Canelo has a size advantage. Now, if he doesn't go to the body, he'll still win the fight and go to a decision like he did with Ryder. But if he goes to the body, I guarantee he's going to knock Charlo at least down. And if he continues to press like he did against uh, uh, Kovalev, he'll knock Charlo out. But I feel like Canelo hasn't been the same since the Bivol fight mentally. Uh, he slipped a little bit, but most of his errors and flaws have been mental flaws. If he stops going to the shoulder and get back to the prolific body puncher that I had favored him to be top of my pound for pound list for, if he gets back to that Canelo... Oh my God, Mel is in trouble. I see Mel in the, in the Castano fight waiting for Castano to do something in certain spots. Nothing changed. He didn't change the range at all. He was just sitting there looking at him. And I'm like, if he does that against a more skilled Castano, which is Canelo, who has an active guard, he's going he's gonna to get his clock cleaned and he's going to get hunted down. And because he's a fighter that doesn't like uh, pressure, he is tailor-made for Canelo. A lot of people talk about Canelo gets tired, Canelo gets tired. It doesn't matter if a guy is going to just run from you the entire time, throwing one or two punches to try to get you off of him and depend so much on his, his size. I now realize most of Bivol's advantages was his size. He was able to leave his probing jab out there and push Canelo off because of his size and his strength. He was also able to uh, endure the shoulder shot, which Canelo has fallen in love to. I wish he would take that shot and direct it towards the body, man. Stop. I know that shot works over time, but there's nothing that's more prolific than body punches. You can't harden, harden up your, your organs. I, I asked Ryan Garcia, would he rather take a body shot or a shot to the shoulder? They both gonna hurt, but the body shot was what put Ryan Garcia down. But uh, like I was saying, Bivol's, most of his advantages was his size. If Canelo and Bivol was the same size, Canelo probably wins that fight. He was able to endure more because what he was able to, uh, he was more durable because his, he, he was a bigger guy. But Charlo's a smaller guy coming up. He's not going to be able to take that. And even if he does have the balls to sit back, uh, step back and leave his jab out there, Canelo will remind him why that's a bad idea. He's going to parry the shot, walk through it and walk forward, creating a ton of anxiety. Like I said, he's going to push off with him and the right hand is going to be there. But if he, if he comes out and he throws body shots to mix in all those tricks and advantages that he already has, I guarantee you that he'll knock him down multiple times and possibly stop him. But like I said, it depends on what Canelo wants to do. He has to choose his path to victory. If he comes out and he throws body shots, like I said, we're probably going to see Mel get stopped. If he doesn't, then we'll probably just see Canelo just march to a decision. You know what I mean? Because, I mean, let's keep it real. Mel's already down. He's not big enough to start a win on the decision. And he's going to be throwing one or two shots at a time. He's going to be throwing the, the jab, right hand. A combination the entirety of the fight and Canelo's guard is built to take that away and come forward and constantly apply pressure so 
like I said, I think this style is tailor-made for him. The fact that it male waits a lot, he's going to be doing a lot of waiting. So if Canelo does fatigue, he'll have moments to take a deep breath in the fight and uh, get back to putting a constant pressure on him. And he gets uncomfortable and jittery. It's just a bad stylistic matchup to where Mel loses either way. I don't see a path to victory for him. Like I said, if Canelo comes out and starts working on the body earlier, it's going to be a stoppage. You're going to get knocked down multiple times, perhaps three times throughout the duration of the fight. And he might possibly get stopped. I've never seen him tested in that area. And he's never let that the fight go to that area. So when no one knows how durable he really is and that if he can make it to the final bell. But, I mean, we shall see, like they always say. But I guarantee Canelo is probably going to win this fight. Uh, if I had if it was a bed man, I'd probably put it on Canelo for a uh, stoppage, late stoppage like he did Kovalev. Or I would just go ahead and place it on Canelo for a decision. Either way, I'm not putting money on mail. I don't give a fuck how good the odds are. That shit would be a miracle. But anyway, it's the Boxer Scholar, and I'm out.